Welcome to Supply Chain Now, the voice of global supply chain. Supply Chain Now focuses on the best in the business for our worldwide audience, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and today's critical issues, the challenges and opportunities. Stay tuned to hear from those making global business happen right here on Supply Chain Now. Hey, good morning, everybody. Scott Luton with Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's show. We are continuing our coverage of the 18th annual Reverse Logistics Association Conference and Expo right here in Vegas, which is is the center of uh, all things, center of the universe for all things returns management, reverse logistics, and more uh, right here uh, this week in Vegas. So I'm joined by my newest best friend. Uh, I want to welcome in Eric Aparicio, Senior Director for Strategic Marketing at Yamaha Corporation of America. Eric, how you doing? Thank you, Scott. I'm doing great. Very great. happy to be here. Great to have you here. I tell you, we should have started rolling earlier because I just love the story you shared a second ago sure. about what, what this makes, uh, why this field, this, this aspect of industry is a passion of yours. So we'll touch on that again here All right. you uh, got in it. just a moment. But before we get there, Eric, let's get to know you a little better. All right. So I want to start with uh, where you grew up. So tell us, give us some context on where you grew up. Well, I am California born and raised. I've uh, lived in California all my life. And so by default, that means that I'm a Dodger fan. <laughs> no matter what, and uh, if you're a Dodger fan, you cannot like San Francisco teams. <laughs> <laughs> so what part of California? Um, Southern California, I, specific, I come from a little town, little working class town called La Puente in LA County. And so you had to be a Dodgers fan growing up. You had to be a Dodgers fan now, growing up. Now, don't hate me, don't hate me. Born and raised a Braves fan, Atlanta Braves oh, fan. Oh, that's okay. And we finally, hey, we finally had a, little, a moment in the sun, first time since 1995. Yep. And we had to go through Title Town, which yep. it, it, the LA Dodgers. Um, I was there for game six. That was a crushing defeat, man. It was, well, I, it I hurt. I'm very humble, so I don't mean, I don't mean to bring it up to uh, no, it's okay. poor salt and wounds, but I was there with my wife, Amanda, and my three kids. So right. I was very fortunate. A buddy of mine had tickets. Yep. And it's one of those moments, I got it on, on, on my phone, it's one of those moments that you know our family will remember because we were all there together. Absolutely. For a long time. That, that's the beauty of sports, especially yep. in this pandemic environment right now, right? Yep, and it was great that you could share that with your family because they'll all remember that. Right, right. Shared family memory. And also, don't, I'm not too uh, shy of bringing it up because, gosh, Dodgers have been so good for so long and lots of titles, and you'll, you'll be been. right back there you know, in the playoffs, I'm sure. Well, let's we, hope so. If we see baseball in 2022. Let's get these discussions done and lift the lock up and, and uh, give the people what they want, right? That's right, that's right. My uh, <laughs> friend to talk my brother into joining me for opening day, but his wife's a bit of a germaphobe, and so I'm not uh -oh. sure yet. Oh, uh, okay, so she's got, she might have a little longer of a return yes, to, that's right. to normal. Okay, well, let's shift gears, kinda. It sounds like so the Dodgers have, have been one of your sp favorite sports teams of all time. That's right. What else? Any, any other team you can mention? Well, you know, um, I used to be more actively involved in sports, uh, but w w when my kids were young, it was soccer and baseball, and I coached teams, and then really? they, uh, they got into a high school band, and so I was a band dad, <laughs> you know, moving, moving gear around. Logistics. Constantly, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and I, di and I did that continuously for literally about a decade. And so afterwards, not really being around sports as much, my, my attention gravitated to different, different hobbies. Yeah, that's, that's important. You flex. Yeah, that's right? right. You flex and evolve. That's right. Um, so what sport, one more follow-up question on sports, what sport was your favorite to coach? To coach? I would say soccer. Soccer. Yes. Uh, did you play as a kid? I did not play as a kid. I was never really exposed to soccer, but my daughter loved soccer. We, she, she was a little girl. We started her one season in softball and one season in soccer, ASO, and she gravitated towards the soccer. So I learned about soccer, became a ref, <laughs> became a coach. Love it. Yeah. That's all it, that's all it takes, right? right? Kids take an interest and we're going to support it. That's right. I'm not a soccer fan. I'm a Gracie fan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Final question here is we're getting to know uh, Eric yep. uh, Aparicio. Favorite movie or book? Give us one. Um, I don't, I have favorite movies by genre. And so I, I chose to focus on, on a book 
and it's not my favorite book, but it's the book that I just finished reading. It's called The QBQ by John Miller. Okay, The and QB Cube? Yeah, the QBQ stands for the question beyond the question. And it's a book about personal accountability, both personally and professionally. And uh, uh, the QBQ stands for the question beyond the question. And uh, part of the book talks about how oftentimes we ask the wrong questions, right? So it talks about often questions that start with when and why are usually the wrong questions and questions that begin with how and what are usually better questions. So as an example, you know, the question is, um, when are they going to hire more people so I don't have to work so much? Mm. That's kind of the wrong question. Right. The right question is, what can I do to help my organization be more successful so that we can hire more folks? Love that. It sounds like a, uh, are, you, are you embracing the right mindset? Absolutely. Mind. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so new one for me, the question beyond the question, Yes. right? That's a, it's a short, easy read. It's written very well. Okay. All right, we're going to check that out. Okay, so let's shift gears over to the year that have, keeps, continues teaching us all, and that's 2021. Right. Um, of course, the last couple of years have taught us plenty, but when you think of key Eureka moments from last year, what's one that comes to mind? I'd have to say connectivity. Um, I think most folks didn't really give a second thought to supply chain right. or give a second thought to pandemics that they had heard about happening elsewhere in the world. And the fact that um, a virus that originated someplace else infected the entire world. Mm. And in that process, it affected our supply chain and people didn't understand, hey, when the labor force for this particular manufacturing organization when that labor force is affected and it affects production, there's this ripple effect that goes downstream. And I, I think the big Eureka mo moment is just about connection mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that the world's a pretty small place and uh, whether we like it or not, we're all in it together. Yeah, I love that, the power of, of connectivity. That's right. Um, so let's talk about, you know, everyone is familiar with Yamaha. They may, you know, everyone may not be familiar about all the different products and all the different aspects right. of the business. Tell us a little more about Yamaha and then your role, Eric. All right, well, Yamaha is a really great place to work. They're the uh, largest musical, musical instrument manufacturer in the world. Uh, they make about everything that you can think of if you go to a concert, yep. whether it's a guitar, a drum, a keyboard, a synthesizer, a digital mixer, the PA that's hanging from the truss. <laughs> They, uh, they make it all, and um, yeah, they're the largest musical instrument manufacturer in the world, and they're a good, great place to work for. Yeah. Um, how long have you been with them? I've been with them for just a little upwards of 25 years. Really? 25 years, yes. Holy cow, was it your first job out of school? No, it wasn't. Uh, I worked for a small retailer um, in Orange County when I first started, and that company, it, it was small, and, and I value it because it's where I cut my teeth but um, they didn't really have a mission and, and vision and company values, yeah. and Yamaha really does. Mm. So congratulations on almost 25 well, years you. of service to uh, the largest, amongst other things, the largest musical instrument company manufacturer in the world. That's I've right. I've forgotten that side of the business. Um, and, I, and I share with you, I think pre-show, uh, I worked for a great uh, organization, uh, learned a lot of things in, in the metal stamping industry. Right. Uh, ages, it feels like ages ago, it's probably like 10 years ago. Uh, but Yamaha is one of the companies we dealt with. Mm -hmm. Your Noonan, Georgia facility. Yep, that's Yamaha Motors. Uh, Janet and the rest of the team down there, great people. Uh, I think the, at, at the Noonan facility, uh, as I can recall, watercraft, uh, golf carts, I believe, and, and some other things, and some ATV products perhaps. Yes. But, um, uh, what you're speaking to in terms of a great place to work, we saw a lot of that uh, in our interaction with them. Right. So uh, it seems like a pretty strong culture there at Yamaha. It is, it's a great culture. They're uh, very employee centric. And um, I like there because, I like working there because it resonates with me. We, we, we don't make products that hurt people or that hurt the environment. We make musical instruments so that other people can make music which enriches everybody's life. Do you play any musical instruments? I don't. No, I okay. don't. 
<laughs> there's still time. Yeah, uh, there's, time, there's right? still time. You know. That's right. Um, all right, let's shift gears. Let's get to kind of the uh, soup of the day, the ish right. topics of the day. Um, and before we ask you about um, you know, some of the things you're focused on when it comes to returns management and reverse logistics, let's, um, uh, as, as you were just approaching the stage here, we're getting y'all set up, you mentioned how this is not formally part, I, I think That's right. formally part of your, your role, but you're real passionate about yes. this field. So, so let's start there. Why are you so passionate? Well, I'm so passionate about it because I grew up in a lower middle class household and uh, we didn't waste anything and uh, it just wasn't an option. And so I grew up with that mindset and uh, our, our president, Tom Sumner, he used to be the general manager of a mass market division and um, he was my manager and our division was losing money. It was losing money because we didn't have a good solution for returns and we were just simply liquidating them and it was an unsustainable practice. And so uh, Tom gave me the task of trying to figure out a better way. Mm. And um, working with a bunch of people way smarter than me, uh, we figured out a way to basically uh, pull out uh, the really great product that was resellable, that was B and C stock. And for the stuff that really wasn't sellable, we found a uh, qualified, responsible re recycler to do their best with it. I love that. So going back to the culture of the company, to, uh, it sounds, sounds, sounds like leadership empowers you to kind of pursue where Absolutely. you can uh, add more to the equation, even yes. if it's outside of your formal yes. uh, job description. That would be a correct description of Yamaha. Okay. All right. So then let's get to, you know, uh, again, here at the RLA Conference and Expo, the center of the universe for all things returns, right. uh, returns management, reverse logistics. What's a couple things that you're tracking in this space and focused on more than others right now? Uh, right now, for me, it's the message of circularity and the circular economy, and I think that that's, that's a message that cannot get enough attention. The idea that we live in a world with finite resources and we need to find a way to better utilize those resources. And so in the case of Yamaha, their products are made well enough to have a secondary and tertiary life. And so let's find a way to put, that, put those products back into the hands of someone else that values having that product. And so I love that message of circularity. Yeah, agreed. Um, and there's so much more we can do when it comes to circularity, especially yep. as you move it upstream into, I, th I think as you mentioned it, uh, product design. Yes. You know, and how can we really um, uh, design products so that um, you know, recycling and, and getting them reused into the next product. That's right. There can be more there. We can avoid the landfall altogether. That's landfill right. Landfill altogether, right? Absolutely. All right. Um, anything else before we get into a big bold prediction? And I, I, I'm looking forward to your answer there, uh, to our based on our pre-show conversation. Anything else when when it comes to this space and how you're benchmarking and you're, you're gathering data? Sounds like you're having a lot of interesting conversations with other companies that um, you know are, are are finding new ways of doing things like you are. Anything else really stick out in your mind? You know, for anybody else that is thinking about reverse logistics and helping to take your company into that next stage. You know, it's really important to understand and to identify the cost of reverse logistics because it's not, it's not as visible to your C-suite executives as, as other elements of the P&L might be, hmm. right? So for, an, for a P&L, you know right away what your margin is. It's right there front and center but uh, the concept of you know, what are my reverse logistics costing me and what is my asset recovery, it's, it's, it's much further down that you really have to dig to find it. Excellent point, and we all know if you can't see it, it becomes really tough to That's manage right. it, right? That's right. Okay, on that note, uh, let's get to um, big, bad, bold prediction mode uh, all right. <laughs> with Eric uh, Aparicio. So talk to us, any, any bold prediction you want to make for the rest of 2022, what we're going to see? Well, I like to preface this by saying I'm driven by data, so I'm not given to big, bold predictions, <laughs> but um, just for this one time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think that with the, this awareness of supply chain that COVID has created, 
and this sense of connectivity that we all have now, I really think that the idea of circularity and the idea of reusing products, it, to me it's, it used to seem like kind of a fundamental, fundamental American value and maybe that's gotten lost because we've become a, a culture of disposal, you know, mm. you know, let's not fix the TV anymore, let's right. go buy a new let's one. Let's replace it. Yes, and I really think that the idea of circularity is going to come roaring back and people are going to understand it and see it for what it is. I love that answer, Eric, so thank you for indulging us. Well, thank you very much. Um, all right, so how can folks connect with you in uh, Yamaha, Eric? Uh, you can reach me at uh, my profile on LinkedIn, uh, it's uh, under my name, Eric Aparicio, or you can reach me at uh, eaparicio at yamaha.com. Okay, it's just that easy. And of course, that we'll easy. have that uh, in the uh, show notes of the episode page. Uh, so I would encourage you all to connect with Eric. I love your passion. I love your, your fact finding and your data um, uh, centric disposition. That's important these days, isn't Absolutely. it? All Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's, that's how we make good decisions. That's right. Uh, good decisions fast. Uh, all right, big thanks to uh, joining us today, Eric Aparicio, Senior Director of Strategic Marketing at Yamaha Corporation of America. Hey folks, uh, stay tuned as we continue our coverage here in Vegas at the 20, let's see, 2022 Reverse Logistics Association Conference and Expo, the 18th annual event where folks are, uh, they're on the move, trying to find better solutions to old and new problems. Absolutely. So hey, signing off, for our Supply Chain Now team, this is Scott Luton challenging you, do good, give forward, be the change that's needed. And on that note, we'll see you next time right back here at Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being a part of our Supply Chain Now community. Check out all of our programming at supplychainnow.com and make sure you subscribe to Supply Chain Now anywhere you listen to podcasts. And follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Supply Chain Now.